Hello, uh, I am Surya Subedi. Uh, I am professor of international law and the author of the study guide which you have been consulting on international economic law. Today I will talk about very briefly what I cover in section B of the course on international economic law. Section B is focused mainly on international economic law institutions. For instance, the World Bank and IMF and International Monetary Fund in full form and other United Nations agencies. What role they have in international economic law, why they were established, what is their mandate, what is their working methods and what are the challenges these institutions themselves are facing today. So, basically from a legal point of view, what these institutions are about and how they are operating today, what impact they are having on people's lives around the globe or on the lives of companies or even the nations and how they are able to cope with the challenges brought about for example, by the ongoing international financial crisis. To begin with um, the World Bank, the World Bank was established soon after the conclusion of the second world war around the time the United Nations was established. There was a, a plan to create in the form of a political body the United Nations and the World Bank to finance the development projects of the countries which were destroyed or devastated by the second world war to assist them to develop their infrastructure and the international monetary fund to bring about financial and monetary stability. These were the reasons these institutions were established, but their mandate remains the same, but their working methods have changed over the years. After helping the countries mainly in Europe devastated by the second world war, the work of the World Bank has changed. In the 60s, 70s and 80s, the World Bank was very much involved in financing the development projects of the countries in Asia, Africa, Latin America, which had obtained their independence, but needed international financial support to develop their economy, to develop their infrastructure. On the road to uh, prosperity, these countries needed to borrow money and the World Bank has been one of the main financiers of various development projects around the globe and of course, the International Monetary Fund to make sure that there is a monetary or financial stability in the international arena. These are the reasons why these institutions have played a very important role over the past 50, 60 years in international economic law. This section, section B focuses on their activities, their mandate basically relying on the constituent documents or the agreements or the uh, properly called articles of agreement of these institutions. What are they uh, supposed to be doing, how they operate, what are the um, problems associated with the implementation of the articles of agreement. These are the issues that I examine in uh, section B uh, of this course on international economic law. Then I go on to analyze other international financial institutions operating within the framework of the United Nations. Um, what role they have to uh, play, what role they were supposed to play uh, whether under the charter of the United Nations or for instance UNCTAD established by a resolution of the United Nations General Assembly. There are some institutions established by treaties, uh, but there are some other institutions established by a resolution of international organizations. So, what role they are supposed to play and how they are performing and uh, how they interact with everyday reality of the world, various economic in, um, issues, uh, socio-political issues. Uh, to do with sustainable development, to do with regulation of foreign investment, to do with uh, financing of a big development projects. For instance, the World Bank, how does it get involved in controlling corruption? It lends money to governments around the globe, but how to make sure that the money is properly spent on the projects that they are meant to be spent for? And the International Monetary Fund is there to make sure that the states have a sound policy in place to benefit from the financing or the financial support that the, the developing countries receive from the World Bank 
an international monetary fund. International monetary fund is there to make sure that the states benefit from the money that these institutions have lent to them. But how far these institutions can go in dictating uh, the terms and conditions under which the money is spent by the receiving money receiving countries. So, these are the issues that I look at and then I with particular focus on the uh, nature and scope of these institutions and uh, the current challenges they are facing. For instance, the international financial crisis which is ongoing, number of countries have been affected by it, how the World Bank and IMF have responded to that challenge. What is the policy uh, applied by these uh, agencies to lend money and how what is the supervisory mechanism these institutions have put in place to make sure that the um, money lent to them is spent in a responsible manner. These are the issues that I look at and then uh, introduce you to various competing arguments, introduce you to the current legal framework that is in existence within these institutions and then what are the challenges uh, and how they are responding uh, to the current challenges. That is how basically trying to make the law basically relevant to the everyday issues that the world is confronting today and that has been my objective in writing the uh, study guide on international economic law and the uh, section on international law of institutions or international development law. Thank you.